we, we've been discussing about uh, the qualities of an effective church worker. The qualities of an effective church worker. The characteristics. When you look at an, a, a, as a church worker, what are you supposed to see? What are we looking out for? What do we want to see in an effective church worker? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's my prayer that this teaching will not just go like that, but it will begin to make us better. Amen. Are, are, we, are we together? It will make us better Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. We stopped at uh, 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 a servant heart. A, a, one very important quality of an effective church worker or a church worker who want to be very productive is servanthood. The person must have a servant heart. You, you can be actively involved in activity without a servant heart. One day you will burst out. One day you will explode. Are you getting my point now? Uh -huh. <laughs> One day you will explode. One day you say, what do you take me for? I know what I'm doing. Don't talk to me like that. You will explode. Are you getting my point here? So it's very, very important that as a church worker, you have to be, we have to be, we have to have a servant heart. Now this is it. I said last week, there is no boss in the kingdom of God. It doesn't matter who you are, we are all laborers. General Vasya, Reverend Dr. Kano, Apostle, Dr. Bishop, member, uh, leader, whatever the position you occupy in church, even if you are a lecturer, even if you are uh, the prime minister or the president of a country, when you come into the church of the living God, the king to all kings, if you are a king in your palace, when you come into the house of God, you become a laborer. You become what? A laborer. You become a laborer. A laborer in the house of God. And the Bible said it, that... Um, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are what? Few. So, harvest is plenty. We have many people who go to church. We have many people who are in the house of God, who want to do things in the presence of God. But the Bible says the laborers are what? How can you have many people around, but laborers very few? We should have more laborers, because we have more crowd. Today, the church have more crowd than any other physical gathering in the world. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? There is revival all over the place. All over the place around the world now, as I'm talking now, there are many people there. The church building is jammed, filled up, 100,000, 50,000, 150,000 people. Some churches are not making noise, but they are making waves. They are not making noise, but they are making waves. Their attendance Sunday morning is over 150,000 in attendance. But they don't go to television, they don't announce it. They don't tell you big sit uh, bigger church seat, you know, bigger church building. The world. No, they don't say all those things. Are we together now? So we need to understand that God needs more laborers. Need more labor. Look at the children. You're going to see things today. And I believe that God is raising an army. God is raising an army. Amen. And we are part of that army. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. One of the things that, one of the quality of an effective church worker that you, we will later talk about is love. And that is what I saw yesterday. Yeah. That's what I saw yesterday. There is no internal rancor. There is no bad belly. There is no, oh, mm, mm, mm. there is no mm, 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 anywhere. Everybody was, you know, for the first time, everybody, there was freedom in the spirit. Mm. Are you get what I'm saying here? Yeah. I don't know whether you understand my point now. Yeah. There was freedom in the spirit. There is nobody trying to outdo person. Try, there is nobody dragging anything with dragging, dragging. No draw, draw. Everybody was in the presence of God. Everybody was having fun. Everybody was just there. We were all laborers. We were all what? Laborers. Nobody used something useful to stone anybody. Uh, there is no cool plotting. It's, there's nothing like that. It's not as if you come to the house of God and then your mind, you are like, who is, who is, the, you know, 
I know it did not start today because even in the, do, in the days of Moses, the Bible said Moses one day came to his congregation and said, who is on the Lord's side? Because the way you guys are doing now, I don't understand. Who is on the Lord's side? I tell you, if you want to join Korah, go. If you want to join this, go. But for the first time, you can see freedom in the spirit. God wants us to be laborers. If, you see, there is no senior laborer. We are all laborers. <laughs> there is no senior laborer. We are all what? Laborers. No HOD. In the university, you can have HOD. Are you getting my point? But when it comes to work, we are all laborers. In Mission House, you have women leader, you have men leader, you have youth leader, you have all those offices. But the truth is this. When it comes to the serious business of working, of laboring, you will see the women leader is the one that will be in front, working. You will see the men leader is the one in front, working. You see the children, everybody working. Who is sitting on the keyboard? A child. Who is going to declare today. A child. Everybody is a laborer. There is no big man in the house of God. Humble yourself. Are we together here? Yes, sir. Remember the last thing we said was the statement of D.L. Moody. He said the measure of a man is not how many servants he has, but how many men he serves. Not how many servants he has. Hey, Sit down there. You, do that. You, do that. Controller general. That's not what God is talking about. God wants all of us to what? Serve. Labor. Labor in the house of God. Labor in the house of God. I was listening to Pastor Chris yesterday, and Pastor Chris was telling the church members, you know, it's one of the old messages. He said, why will a member come meet you and then tell you that, oh, they, they have not eaten, and then you bring that person to the pastor? He said, then, he said, then what about you? What have you done? How have you assisted that person? How have you supported that person? And then he read the scripture and I was like, wow, that's powerful. That's true. What have you done? Sometimes there are some issues in the church. One, two, three brothers can come together. One, two, three sisters can come together and say, let's settle this issue. And then we handle it. A pastor will not even what? He will not even hear anything. He will not know. Workers with a servant heart do not consider any task below them. I have been to retreat, so I've been to camp and I've seen professors washing the toilet, cleaning the washroom. I'm telling you, go to campground. If you will not do it, you will see the Baba, Baba, is that Baba Adeboy or Baba Akumuyi or any of them. We, they will do it. When you see them doing it, you will take you will, because everybody is working. Everybody is working. They want to serve because they love Jesus. And not necessarily to receive impartation or anointing from the pastor. Man, I want to do this so that the anointing can drop on me. <laughs> People have so many ulterior motives. Are you getting what I'm saying? If I do this one, I want to tap. Have you heard the word tap? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Tap the anointing. Tap the anointing. If you want to tap the anointing, come and touch my leg now. Touch this shoe. If you can touch this shoe, anointing will enter you. Now, somebody is here. I want to pull my suit. This suit came all the way from Jerusalem. It was the suit that Jesus Christ wore on his way to Calvary. What is all this? What is all this? What is all this? They don't need to do that to receive it. They, they are serving because they love God. They are serving because they are committed to God. They are serving because they are in love with somebody. When you are in love with somebody and you give to that person, you don't expect anything in return. You, you become selfless. You say, what you have is my own. Is that not the vow we took on wedding day? Yes, sir. He said, I, I love you with all that I have, I bestow unto thee. And all that you have is, is mine. Uh -huh. All my, mine is thine, all thine is mine. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. Workers are those who work without expecting anything in return are people that God really anoints. I'm telling you, they are people that God really anoints. That's why God anoints children. Yes. Workers with a servant heart do not engage in self promotion, they don't call attention to themselves. They do not consider their position or offices in the world that is outside the church as they serve in the house of God. They, they throw away all their 
all their paraphernalia of office, and they just serve God. And they just labor in the house of God. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. Ready, ready, ready to serve. Ready, ready, ready to serve. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. The, this is the mind of Christ, though. Because the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. This is the mind of Christ. The mind of service. The mind of what? Service. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. It's very, very important. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 8. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 8. Philippians 2, verse 5 to verse 8. Open your Bible and you can project it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If they let this might be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. Taking the form of a bond servant. Another translation say a man. And coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself. And became obedient to the point of death. Even the death of the cross. Wow. New King James. I just read from New King James Version. So, setting an example for his disciples to follow, Jesus taught his disciples what? Servanthood. Servant leadership. Not a controlling leader, but a servant leader. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. If you are working with me, if you are attending this church and we are together here and you cannot take opening prayer, it means that I am fa I'm a failure. Opening prayer of 10 minutes. Even the children can take opening prayer. Are we together here? Uh -uh. You, should be, you, should, you should be able to quote the Bible. If you can sing any worldly song and you cannot comfortably sing, if you can sing one song in the secular outside and you cannot comfortably sing ten praise and worship songs, we should flog you. Yeah, we should lie you down and flog you because you are wasting the data you are using at home. Ah, if you know how to uh, baby candle. Calm down, baby, calm down. And you don't know how to worship God. And we are worshiping God. You are putting your two hands in your pocket and looking up with eye open. You don't know how to connect. We should flog you. We should flog you. It's very, very important. No, what are, you, what are, what are we doing? We don't want to raise people who tomorrow in the classroom, in the classroom, in the university or anywhere, one young man or benke will come and twist for you and you lose your brain. Because you don't have anything inside you to withstand them. You must be strong. He said be, he said, be strong in the Lord and what? In the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Say so that you'll be able to withstand. Is it because we are in the evil days? Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ even washed his disciples' feet. Servant leadership. He's a servant leader. Let's quickly move to another one. Hallelujah. This is going to be in the book when the book comes out. Number 14, ability to endure hardship. A true and effective church worker must be able to do what? Endure, endure hardship. I did not say avoid hardship. It's one thing to avoid hardship. It's another thing to endure hardship. You know why we are soldiers? We are soldiers of the cross. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. So as a church worker, as a church worker, any day that we are not having service in, we are not maybe having service, it should not be the day that you should be, that it should not be your happiest day. No, 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 no. It shouldn't be your happiest day now. Say, ah, thank God, do. Ah, no service today. Ah, Jesus. Ah, at least I go rest. I'll rest. Meanwhile, 
If you do not go to work, you are like, ah, I'm going to miss some money. Oh. The, thing, the ground will not level. Things will happen. Ground will not level. One dollar short. Ah, something will not, it will drop. Something will not level. But if you are not in the house of God, I think we should flog you too. Oh yeah, we should flog you too. And that's the reason why many people, if they lose their job, they believe they have lost their life. Do you know some people, if they lose their job, they cannot survive. They won't survive it. They will go straight into depression. Because they've not been able to learn how to live without all those kinds. How to survive. And it is when you build strength inside of you, build capacity, that's when you'll be able to endure. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. Paul said something the other day. He said, I've learned how to abase and to abound. I've learned how to be in want and I've learned how to be hungry. Children of this day, they've not learned how to be hungry. We learn how to be hungry to the extent that we converted hunger to fasting. Hello? We convert, uh -uh. You convert it to fasting. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. Very, very important. The ability to endure hardship is one of the virtues that a church worker must possess and cultivate. Many times, serving God, serving in the house of God requires sacrificing your convenience. Are we together? Yes, sir. Serving in the house of God requires that we do what? Sacrifice our convenience in order to do the will of God. Why? Because doing the will of God is superior to enjoying your comfort. I repeat, any day, any time. Any day, any time. You go to work, only for you to come back home, and there is service. You manage to, some people say, I just manage to go work. I just manage to go to work. Why didn't you manage to go to church? So God will have to pay, while you will have to play. Are we together now? So we must rearrange our priorities, and the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to read the scripture to us in Luke chapter 22, verse 42. Luke chapter 22, verse 42. Luke 22, verse 42. Nevertheless, not my will, but what? Not my will, but what? Your will be done. This is Jesus talking. Not my will. Nevertheless, it's a word, it's a word that you use... Uh, when you have other options. Are you getting what I'm saying now? There are other options, but I choose to do your will. Are we together now? I, I, there, there are other things I may have used the time to do. There are uh, there's other places I'm, I, I should have gone to, but I choose. Nevertheless, notwithstanding, in spite of, irrespective of this, I now Give myself. I choose. I choose the way of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So an effective church worker must learn to say, nevertheless, not my comfort, but your will be done. Yes, uh, but unfortunately, not all church workers can say this. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. Now, some are ready to work as long as their convenience or comfort is not tampered with. I will serve God. You will see them even crying. Use me, Lord. Use me. Send me, Lord. I will go. I will go for you, Jesus. Yeramai. Send me. And they are crying seriously. But when the opportunity comes for them to go, ah, Father. Uh, I, I, you, you understand. Lord, you underst God, you understand. God, you understand. Anytime I hear God understand, I know that person is shortchanging God for something else. God understand now. Ah. Pastor, this one you are preaching this morning, said we don't understand. I'm not preaching to members, I'm preaching to workers. Workers, is not, they are not for meat. They are not for milk. They are for bone. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. Bone. Those who are ready to do what? Go. We are soldiers. Soldiers of the cross. 
In the name of Jesus, we shall conquer. So the effectiveness of such workers will be limited because they have options. They have options. Praise the Lord, somebody. So I'm not saying that a church worker must not go all out. You know, I, I'm not saying that he should go all out to hurt himself. Are you getting my, you know, before he can be effective? No. Let me make a statement now. I am saying that in the course of the work, hardship may come. Are we together? Your ego may be touched. Everybody say, mm. Mm. Uh -huh. Your respect may be touched. One day, one of our wonderful uh, one, uh, woman of God. She's going to be with the Lord now. Uh, big mommy. My church accountant, a woman, said, went to her and said, I don't like the way Apostle talked to me today. Ha, ah, Pastor shout for me. Even my husband doesn't shout for me. Pastor, Pastor shout for me today. And the woman looked at her and said, close your mouth to and now said to her, if only you know how many shouts I have taken. <laughs> you don't know. Me and Big Mommy started Mission House right from, from the scratch with me. If you know how many shouts I have taken, that is what carries us to this level. If, it, if not the work, you go hear many shouts. Even yourself will start to shout for some people. <laughs> not too long. Somebody called me and said, ah. I don't like the way Dickie Neth chat for me too. <laughs> I say, ah, why did, why did he chat on you? Why did she, why did she talk to you? He said, ah, because he said, I come, he said, I just come only two minutes late. If you see the eye she used to look me. <laughs> I say, I say, that one, you are wrong. Are you getting my point here? And then she said, why must you do that? No, you shouldn't be. All members can do that, but not you. He said, ah. He said, I really feel. And she was saying it. Ah. Oh, I really, I really, I really feel. I said, don't worry. It is the work of God. Can you imagine in early in the morning you are getting ready and the children are slowing down? How do you feel? <laughs> you see? How do you? Look. I will leave you people. <laughs> I will just leave you people. I move. And sometimes you are you are you are you are trying to, to cook something and you are tell you tell somebody go and bring this for me. And the person is you leave the road, you go there, pick it. Um, or you are so much in the order, you want to get something, you send the bag, go and bring my bag for me. And the person is calling you from mommy, I didn't see the ba bag that is right there. <laughs> what bag that is, um, by the time he gets there, mommy, what did you say? Ah. You are already up there. You are now asking me down here. What did you say? <laughs> because, you, because of urgency. Listen, in the house of God is the same thing. Urgency of the work makes many things happen. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. So an effective church worker will endure hardship, will sacrifice his comfort, if need be, if need be, to do the work of God. Look at what Paul says, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. Paul says this. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You must do what? Endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Look at verse 12. Go to verse 12. Go to verse 12. He said, if we endure hardship, we will reign with him. He didn't say if we preach the best message. If we endure hardship. You know one of the things I used to address our church workers for. I tell them, I say, look, anytime you watch television, 
and you see a church, and you like the church, the organization, the man of God is talking everywhere, is serene. If need to fall to the ground, you will hear it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Everywhere, look at all darliness. Look at, I said, anytime you see that, it is training like this that make them. It is constant talking. The man of God is talking to us and say, look, we must do it right. We must do it like this. We must do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go and do evangelism. Let's bring the people. And you bring new people, they join the class. You are teaching them. You are training them. Are you together now? Yes, sir. You, are, you, are, you are hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Very, very important. I tell them, it is not angels that make that place to be like that. Too. It is human beings like us. Human beings like us made it serene. You know, most times, we know how to complain about our own. Yeah. But we don't learn from where, what we see, so that we can do that in our own place. My father in the Lord of Blessed Memory always say that uh, Paul, talking about me, is, he calls me spiritual thief from Lagos. Because anytime I get back home to uh, the church where I left before we started Mission House, anytime we get to that place, during maybe youth conference, anything, anything I see, any good thing I see there, I will copy it. Ah, anywhere I go and I see something good, he knows something good, he knows me. I say I will tell him, say, come, can't you see, do you see the way their media is? You see what they did, you what they did. I want us to, um, to achieve that. My eye sees good things, and I bring it back to my house, and I implement it. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. It's not bad to see something good outside now, and then want to be like that. Is it a bad thing? No. It's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. It is, if it, it is only if it's against your vision, against what God called you to do, that's when you leave it. Are you getting my point? But it's something good. Why not? Why not? Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. So many years ago, we used to put the, the choir on the altar in Mishal. Choir we sit on the altar. And the, men, the ministers will also sit opposite. Choir will sit here. Minister will sit here. Facing each other, I discovered that half of the choir, they will be sleeping during message. And I'm not seeing them because I'm now facing here, facing the congregation. And one program, we're doing one grace festival, and the video capture all of them. I say, very good. Teaching practice. Teaching what? Practice. So during the training, I said, play the video. And they saw that. I said, stop. You stop. Everybody look at yourself. Hey. It was like let the ground open. I say, no, it used to happen. It's not, it's not as if we are shaming you. We are only letting you know that from today, oh, that we know. Uh, we know. <laughs> and from today, oh, you will not sit on the altar again. All of you sit in the congregation. Even ministers, you too. Face the altar. Everybody face the altar now. So that when I'm preaching, if I'm preaching like this and you are sleeping, I can be there. The Lord, somebody shout hallelujah. I'll touch you a little bit and you will wake up. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. It takes endurance or perseverance for intercessors to stay in prayer till the Holy Spirit releases them. Yes, true of us. It's true. It's true. It takes perseverance for choir members or a church orchestra to continue to practice longer than the normal time just to get the music right. Yes, it takes endurance. In the midst of that, you will see some choir ministers and choir members shouting on the, the, music, the, uh, the keyboardists. No, that's not the key I'm talking about. What, what? I, I used to watch when my wife is uh, uh, there in practice. Raise it, raise it, raise it. Ad lip, ad lip. That is at that point you ad lip. I'm like, I've learned so many things, and I can't say I can't sing one thing. Because you know why? Because of what? You, you want it to be better. Look, we are the people of God, and now you know we are people of excellence. We should do it the best. We should do it what? Ah, uh ah. -uh, we should do it the best. We should do, ah, uh, we should be the best. 
How can people in the world organize a wedding ceremony and is more organized than the one the church does? No. We, we have the spirit of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. We have the spirit of excellence. We should do it what? Better. Somebody say better. better. Somebody say better. better. It takes endurance for those controlling traffic or for ushers or those handling camera to be on their feet in the church for hours. Endurance, if there's endurance, or if not, you come one Sunday, the following Sunday, you say, Man of God, I, I took Talano. <laughs> Talano 3. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's not inside church of air condition, no. Oh. Hmm. You know, we are doing executive church here. Somebody say executive. executive. There is what we call jungle ministry. Yeah? Open heaven. And you will still have to serve God. You will still have to worship God. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. It takes perseverance for ushers to be on their feet for the greater part of the service, especially during special programs. Are we together? We are not talking about ushers that come to church with pillow and duvet. Just to, especially during night vigil. It is perseverance that makes workers go the extra mile to achieve results. Somebody say, I will achieve results. Say, I will achieve results. Achieve result. achieve result. When I was preparing to write some of my exams, there are times that we have to sit down, do they put two legs inside water. And I will still be dozing. And I will get up. Sometimes you read, walking. Are we together? Yeah. You are walking in your room because you don't want to sleep. They say it's bitter cola. Some of us will eat bitter cola, eat, drink coffee, and we, that will be the day we will sleep more. <laughs> <laughs> I started saying, Holy Ghost, help me. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. Do I still have any time? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's perseverance. It takes perseverance to go the extra mile to achieve results. Now, can I make this statement? Hello, sir. Hello, ma. Hello, sir. Hello, ma. Let's be calm. Yeah, because it will pick any sound. Listen to this. Without perseverance, workers will give up once they are being overstretched. Mm. Hello? Nah. Somebody say overstretched. overstretched. That the day you carried speaker and you came for setup, that was the day your, your, your back gave way. Hello? Hi. Hello? Hi. After the service, you just you, you have already taken talent before you came to church. And you managed to come to church. That is somebody say manage. manage. You know that word there. Eh? God will give record of how many times you have given that. <laughs> I just managed today. The way my body is doing me. On Monday morning, that body will wake up. Yes. Hey, oh yeah, it's work. We need to quickly achieve. Praise the Lord, somebody. So no wonder, no, 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 you see, I, I used to tell people, look at what the Bible says in 2 Peter, before I say that, in 2 Peter 1, 6. Because when you are overstressed, <laughs> overstretched, overstretched, you need perseverance to be able to, you know, we always shout, wall of Jericho fell down flat. Hallelujah, wall of Jericho fell down flat. If you know how many times they have to walk around that city. Every day, say they should walk around the city once. City, oh. <laughs> of course, I, fear, I, I believe that somebody will be saying, all this work, Moses, all this work, Joshua, all this work, Let's just enter the city. Must we walk around the city? We enter the city and, and fight battle. Why, what, which kind of fight is it? March around the city. 
once every day. And the last day, he said they must march round seven times that day. The last day. Okay. If they move round once every day, by the last day, they would have already been tired. Now, that last day that they were super tired, he said that day requires seven times. Uh -uh. And then you shout with strength. <laughs> which strength is left in me to still shout after move, walking around the city seven times in one day perseverance what do I say perseverance persevere 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 no wonder, no wonder perseverance is one of the things that the bible says we must believe we must have we must add to our faith 2 Peter 1 6. Knowledge with self control. Self control with endurance. Endurance with what? Godliness. Add it to your faith. As I round up this morning, James chapter 5, verse 11 says, You have heard of the perseverance of Job. And you have seen the end intended by God. That the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. Job endured. It was like the whole heaven will fall down. But God had a plan. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job. And have seen the end of the Lord. That the Lord is very pitiful of and of tender what? Mercy to those who persevere. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. He endured trials, he endured, and God restored his fortune. Gave him twice as much as he had before. His second half was better than his first half. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. And the Bible says in Matthew chapter 10, verse 22, those who endure to the end shall be saved. Let's stand up to our feet. Those who endure to the end shall be saved. Those who endure to the end shall be saved. Those who endure to the end shall be saved. Hallelujah. Those who endure to the end shall be saved. Hallelujah. Those who endure to the end shall be saved. Enduring to the end. Enduring to the end. Persevering. Having a servant heart. The qualities of an effective church worker. The qualities of an effective church worker. Ready, waiting, able to go all the way. Somebody say, I am able. I am able. Somebody say, I am ready. I in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I'd like somebody to shout a better hallelujah. Hallelujah. One prayer I want you to pray. Say Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Help me to be an effective church worker. Help me to be an effective church worker. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Amen.